Suspense. Your host is Autolite, world's largest independent manufacturer of automotive electrical equipment. Autolite makes over 400 products for cars, trucks, tractors, airplanes, and boats in 28 plants from coast to coast. Autolite products include dependable stay-full batteries, battery cable, starting motors, fuel pumps, bullseye seal beam headlights, horns, distributor caps, distributors, coils, and a complete line of ignition-engineered Autolite spark plugs designed for every use from the sturdy, heavy-duty transport type to the world-famous standard and resistor types. Autolite serves the greatest names in the industry. So, from bumper to tail light, you're always right with Autolite. And now, Autolite and its 98,000 dealers everywhere. Present Suspense. Well, Doc, what's the verdict? There's nothing wrong, is there? Nothing physically. Oh, you had me worried. For a minute, I thought you were going to ground me. I am going to ground you, Dan. I'm not going to okay your license renewal. Why not? You just said there was nothing wrong with me. I said there was nothing physically wrong. Your heart is fine, so are your lungs. But nerves are a part of the body, too, and yours are... Well, they're not so good. What's wrong with them? Look at that. Steadier than yours, I'll bet. Sometimes nerves can be too steady. Right now, you're angry. Your hands ought to be shaking. Your heart ought to be beating fast. But you're as cold as ice. You're like a small boy putting on a show, trying to act tough. What are you trying to prove to yourself? Why don't you stick to broken bones and chicken pox, Dr. Madden? Unless, of course, you have some reason for refusing to renew my license. A sort of personal, private reason. Oh, I don't know what you mean, Dan. Oh, yes, you do. Naturally, you'd prefer your daughter to marry my boss instead of me. Why shouldn't you? Who am I? Just a pilot with a war record everybody's forgotten. That's not the same as money in the bank. But Mary hardly knows you. Anyway, she's engaged to Jim. Sure she is, to please you, that's why. And you and Jim get together and fix it not to renew my license. Oh, Dan, this is ridiculous. Is it? If I haven't a license, I can't fly. And if I can't fly, Jim can fire me. Then I'll leave town, you hope. Well, Doc, Jim may be your fair-haired boy, but he is in Mary's. I never knew you knew Mary so well. I never heard her mention your name. There's a lot of things you don't know. Sometimes you can tell how a woman feels just by the way she looks at you. By the way she says hello or good morning. By the way her eyes take you in and hold you. Particularly in a uniform. Is that why you had that uniform made for yourself? Maybe. I like the way I feel in a uniform. Like I can hold my head up. Be somebody. Oh, Dan. You are somebody, even without that uniform. You bet I am. I'm Dan Crowley, the best pilot in the state of Maine. And I don't need your okay to keep me flying either. There are other doctors. And I think you should see one of them. Someone who is better able to help you the way you need to be helped. You'd like to help me right into the Laughing Academy if you could get away with it. Look, Doc. I dig what you've been getting at ever since the examination began. Well, it won't wash, see? I know you're out to get me. You and Jim both. And all I'm going to say is, be careful. 
I like to keep it close to me if it's all the same to you. It's okay with me. After all, you have a license for it, and I know it makes you feel better. A lot better. Personal plane service. Hello, Jim. Oh, hello, Doc. Jim, I, uh, I just got through giving Dan Crowley his physical. Is he okay? No, he isn't. His nerves are in bad shape. I think you'd better handle him with kid gloves, Jim. Oh, that, that's dandy. His job's about over now. He's going to let him go at the end of the week. Oh, well, couldn't you keep him on a while longer? Well, I, I don't see how with no business. I'll be lucky if I can charter some hunting parties this fall. Uh, but say... Is our uh, date still on for tomorrow? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, that's what you said last week. Okay, I'll pick you up tomorrow, just after lunch. And this time, no excuses. All right. And, uh, Jim, about Dan. Kid gloves. Okay. How'd you do? Well, hello. Uh, are you a good pilot? Oh, yes, ma'am. As good as they come. Are you safe? Most of the time. Of course, I, I sort of lose my head when I'm around a, a pretty gal. Well, I'd like to engage your services for a wedding party next month. Oh, you mean I'm hired? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Hi, Jim. <laughs> Hello, baby. Now, look, I didn't come here to smooch with you. What about that hunting trip tomorrow? Well, it's all set. Now, look, you have to tell me where your cabin is. I've got to make out a flight plan. Oh, Lake Wanabaga. Wanna what? Wanabaga. W-A-N-A-B-A-G-A. Simeon. I see. And it's about 18 miles west of Belleville. Cabin's on the east shore of the lake. Uh, not far from the Cap Town Road Fork. Got it? Yep, I hope so. You think your father will be able to leave his beloved patients and get away? Not unless we practically kidnap him. Well, I can hit him over the head with a blunt object. Oh, that seems a little harsh. You take one arm, I'll take the other, and we'll both pull. I'll have my rifle along just in case. Hey, come on home and help me fix dinner. Look, if I'm going to leave tomorrow, I have to finish up some of this stuff. Oh, well, don't be late. Remember, blueberry muffins. And I expect to be taken to the movies. You make me feel so married. Anything wrong with that? No, I like it. See you later. Bye. Bye. Dan, you frightened me. What are you doing here? Waiting for you, Mary. Why? I thought maybe we could have dinner together or something. I'm having dinner with Jim. Thank you very much. Are you sorry? Sorry enough to break your date for me, honey? Careful. It's loaded. Good night, Dan. Some other time, baby. You and me. The doc phoned you about my exam. Oh, uh, yes, yes, he did. Well, look, Jim, don't let that worry you. I can get another doctor who'll okay me tomorrow. Well, as a matter of fact, Dan, now that the season's over, well, there won't be much flying to do. And... My services are no longer required? Well, yes, well, that's about it. Sorry. Oh, why be sorry? I understand. You know, if I had any business, I... Sure, sure, I know. When do I start packing? Well, I'd like you to stay on for another week at least. Take care of things until I get back. Are you going somewhere, Colonel? Yeah. I'm going on a hunting trip with Doc. I didn't know you were a hunter. 
Well, I, I'm not, not really. But it'll be kind of fun to get out of town for a while. Ever since I was a kid, I loved hunting. I had a 22 when I was only 13. Squirrels, chipmunks, rabbits. Pew, pew, pew. And then I got a 30-30 in some real hunting. But then in the war... Yeah, I know, Dan. Never mind. I was in the war, too. Sometimes you're kind of chicken, boss. Okay, so I'm chicken. Well, I guess I'll be shoving off. Have a good trip. Thanks. see me, huh? But I can see you. You got your right hand in your pocket, haven't you, Jim? And now you're reaching for the lamp switch. What are you doing out here, anyway? I've been looking at you through my snooper scope. Your what? Well, sniper scope's the right name, but the infantry always called them snooper scopes. Ever see one? No. I picked it up in the island. It's quite a gadget. Here, let me show you. See? This is a telescopic sight. And right here under the barrel is a spotlight with its own battery. But here's the trick. It's infrared light. So? Well, at night you can't see infrared light. Night snipers used these during the war. They were terrific. Just like putting an invisible spotlight on the enemy so you could shoot him. Well, if, if it's invisible, how does the guy with the gun see anything? Because the telescopic sight has a filter in it so you can see the infrared light. Very clever. Well, it gives me a real bang. At night I'm invisible. I can see, but I can't be seen. Oh, but your game can still pick up your scent. Why, all it's good for is... Hunting a man. Sure, I know. You ever kill a guy, Jim? I got a Jap once in the Solomon. He was just stepping out of a plane. We were strafing the field, and when he saw my burst kicking toward him, you ought to see him run. When I got him, cut him right in two. You must have had a real nice time in the war. Oh, gosh, I, I gotta get out of here. I'm late. Sure, go ahead, boss. I'll close up the joint. Oh, thanks. Well, be seeing you. Sure. see, but I can't be seen. But your game can still pick up your scent. All it's good for is hunting a man. Hunting a man. Hunting a man. Good evening. This is Rex Marshall speaking for Autolite. We'll get back to our suspense story in just a moment. You know, I guess everybody recognizes a spark plug when he sees one, but I imagine a lot of people have no idea that this heart of your car's ignition system has to be such a very tough hombre. For example, a spark plug must fire from one to 2,000 times per minute, depending upon your driving speed. Another thing, it has to be able to take heat up to 4,000 degrees Fahrenheit, and it must be able to stand pressures up to 800 pounds per square inch. I guess you'll agree with me, that really is a lot of punishment. So that's why your spark plugs must always be in top shape. 
Otherwise, your car's performance will suffer. You'll get slower starts, rougher riding, use up more gasoline. So that's why it really pays to have your spark plugs checked regularly by your Autolite spark plug dealer. If cleaning or adjustments are needed, he has the equipment to do the job properly. If you need replacements, he'll recommend ignition-engineered Autolite spark plugs. Like, for example, the famous Autolite resistor spark plug. The greatest advancement in spark plugs for automotive use in the past 20 years. Let me show you why. You see, like a little friend Sparky here, every spark has two parts. The front or useful end, which does all the work of igniting the fuel mixture, and the useless tail end, which does the damage by burning away the spark plug electrodes. But the built-in Autolite resistor allows the good part of the spark to pass through and do its work, but cuts off almost all of the bad part. And because that damaging tail end is almost entirely eliminated, the Autolite resistor spark plug gives you double spark plug light, smoother engine performance, and quick start. <laughs> you know, this amazing Autolite resistor spark plug is one of a complete line of Autolite spark plugs, ignition engineered for every use. So why don't you stop in soon and see your Autolite spark plug dealer. You'll find him wherever you see this sign, or simply call Western Union by number, and operator 25 will be glad to give you his location. Remember, from bumper to tail light, you're always right with Autolite. And now, the second act of The Invisible Killer, starring Jackie Cooper and John Dahl. A few weeks. That soul of yours will be as good as new, Joe. Oh, I said, don't feel so good now, Doc. I know, but you'd be a little more patient with it and give those bones a chance to grow together. How long is it going to take? i got to make money feed my family. Well, if you get stuck before your compensation comes through and need some cash, just give me a call. Uh, thank you very much, Oh, Doc. you'll get a bill for it. And if the arm gives you any trouble, call Dr. Graham, because I'll be out of town for a week. Okay. I hope you have a nice time. Thanks, Joe. Goodbye. <laughs> Hey, oh, wait a minute. You can't do that. Oh, oh, that. Phone may ring again. Oh, yes, somebody may have a baby. Or an ingrown hey, toenail. That's right, Mrs. McPherson's baby. I've and got it. It's delivered by Dr. Come with us. Come on. Hey. Hey. Time to go. I'm tired. How about some water for some tea? That's what you need, tea. Ah, an infusion of tannic acid is very stimulating. Hey, what do you know? Kidnapped before I had a chance to get out of the uniform. <laughs> Take those. There's no fluoroscopes up here. Hey, it's chilly in here. Well, I'd build a fire if I had any wood, I mean. Hey. There's a whole box full of nothing but wood right there. Allie, you kitty. They get like that the minute they know a man is hooked. Oh, man, I may not get up tomorrow at all. I may just sleep. Yeah, I know what you mean. It's the mountain air. Hey, you better call Nicky about some more kerosene. There's hardly enough to dinner with. I thought so. Never a moment's peace. Better put most of the kindling in the middle there, Jim. So who's building this fire anyway? I got my own system. Hey, is this thing working? I don't get a line hum. Hey, honey. Yeah? Is this thing working? When's the last time you crank it hard? Well, the line sounds dead. Why, well, the phone wire's been cut. What? Hey, Mary. What is it? Was this thing working when you were up here over Labor Day? Yes. Well, that's funny. Uh, turn on the light, Jimmy. All right. 
light doesn't work either. Well, the bulb must be out. Try the one on the wall switch there. Oh. You got a kerosene lamp? Yeah, I'll get one. Funny. The phone and the lights, too. Accident to a pole, probably. <laughs> oh, that's a loon. They have a great sense of humor. They're always laughing like that. Yeah, I know. I, I've heard loons before. Yeah, we've heard loons be quiet for a while. They're such ham actors, always overdoing a mad laughter routine. <laughs> Here, see what I mean? That wasn't any loon. What was it? What do you mean? That was a man. <laughs> Oh, who'd be up here doing bird calls at this time of night? Well, only one person I can think of. Why, Jim, it couldn't be. I don't know what you guys are talking about. We're talking about Dan Crowley, Mary. Just like him to put a kid trick like this. What? What's that, Jim? Somebody throwing pebbles at the window. Charlie, Danny, stop kidding around. Come on in and have some supper. Quick, down on the floor. What's he trying to do? I don't know. Hey, Danny! Likes to hunt. But, but that doesn't make sense. But it does to him, Mary. Uh, better move over there. Well, at least he can't see us now. But he can. He's got a thing called sniper, a sniper scope on his rifle. He showed one to me yesterday. I didn't realize how he planned to use it. Mary, are you all right? Yes, yes, I'm fine. He's a better shot than that. He deliberately missed you. He's deliberately missing all of us. He's playing with us. Milking the game for all the kicks he can. He's on the roof now. I'm going for help. No, no. He can see you out there in the dark. Maybe I can do something, Jimmy. Dan likes me. Doc! Oh, Daddy. Daddy, you're hurt. No, I just grazed my shoulder. It's nothing serious. It's serious enough. I'm going to talk to him. Daddy! Daddy, it's Mary. Listen to me, Daddy. Mary. Daddy, don't... Well, that settles it. You walk right into his trap. Where's your flashlight, Doc? On the table. Jim, I don't want you to go. He'll kill you. Sweetheart, there's nothing else to do.
Shut up the infrared. He looks like a kid. That's all he was. Trying so hard to prove he was a man. Mm -hmm. 